Yeah, so welcome again to the last talk of Cousin. Um, it's about two little open source projects I've been developing for quite some time. And um, first, to get a feel for the audience, uh, who of you uses um, Tmux? Okay, that's most of them. Screen users? Okay. Detach users? Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, and then who uses the tiling window manager? Okay, that's also multiple. Yeah, so maybe we can speed up or, or skip those. So, basically, who's heard of Oberon before? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's basically a single user operating system developed in the 80s, probably. Yeah, and used as a teaching tool at ETH. Um, it's, I can recommend it if you want to look into something, into a non Unix operating system which you can still understand to some degree. And that's basically the user interface of it. So. Um, as you can see, it's kind of like a tiling window manager. It's, there's not much overlapping going on here. Um, screen space is, is used efficiently. Then, Acme from Plan 9. Anyone familiar with that? Yeah. That's basically for a text editor or a programming environment from Plan 9. Again, we have a tiling. UI where no overlapping windows occur and basically it's a split. Then in the modern world or modern, well, the Unix world, there are a couple of examples for um, tiling window managers, which you're probably familiar with. So, and DVM is the one which is the most closely related to DVTM, which I'm talking about. But basically, we can say that. DVM, DVTM is basically a port of DVM to the console in some sense. And so what's this all about? Basically I wanted to have a similar working environment which also works over SSH sessions. And so on, or frame bar for consoles, basically where you have no like real graphical system in place. And um, yeah, so we split it's basically the functionality of that. Of Luca is uh, like detach in a sense, it provides session persistence. And DVTM is a tiling window match for the console, and it's basically it multiplexes uh, the console. And so, yeah, tiling window match, I think you're all familiar with that. But the basic idea is to let the, the window match do its job, but not manually move windows around and stuff, but just. Um, yeah, optimally use the available screen space and basically don't have to care about window placement. Um, yeah, so history lesson. So that was the initial, initial announcement to the SACLAS mailing list in 2007. So yeah, it was way back in my teen years and I to some degree didn't know what I was doing at the time. Probably still don't know yet. <laughs> Currently, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and yeah, as announced, it's basically as DVM ported to the console. And yeah, it, it shares lots of concepts where they basically, um, yeah. I don't know. Is anyone here using DVM? Or? Okay. Yeah, so that should be familiar with you. So we we want to place windows at two, as I said, and then we divide the, the available space into master and stacking area. So we'll show that later. We have a tagging concept, which is so well, which can be sort of like workspaces, but more powerful. And then yeah, we also have similar key bindings. Um, and yeah, and. Uh, in the terminal world, we have to prefix every command or every key with some kind of um, yeah, 
some prefix which you know which uh, which doesn't conflict with lots of programs ideally and that's control T. Yeah. And then we also configure our source or, or key bindings to editing the source code. So as you saw the initial announcement was on the Sackless mailing list, so it shares um yeah. some fish. Basically we try to to do one thing and do it well. That's also why we split the, the persistence of the sessions into a separate tool. Uh, we have no internal copy mode or something. We type um, the scrollback history to your editor and then you can use your natural editing habits to basically shrink your uh, interesting area to whatever you want and then um, you can paste it into another, into another window. So, yeah. I think I've mentioned that. Yeah, that's uh, that's one convenience. So um, in general, key bindings have to come uh, are compared to editing the source code. That has the advantage that you can we have no special parser or so for a config file. We use the C preprocessor for that. Which, um, should be familiar to. Uh, to the yeah, intended audience, I would say. Um, and then we can create some windows. Now I will probably uh, do that a bit interactively. So, um, so now I started UTM. As you can see, nothing happened basically, except. Except if you now do like, um, you now have a scroll back history, which ST normally doesn't have. So that's again an example where multiple tools are combined. Now we can start creating windows. Basically now I've created four windows. Above you see basically the tags uh, here would be some space for a status message. Yeah, then we can start uh, focusing different windows. Um, I think that's what this slate says. I don't know if it's the last, uh, the next one. So we can focus different windows. We can also create um, windows in th with the same working directory. So now I change the home directory like right, uh, this only works if the proc file system is available. So um, Linux or with compatibility um, or proc emulation on other systems. Um, yeah, then we can focus a given window. As you see, the, they're numbered. So now if you want to focus window 4, then you can press what, G, that 4 and then yeah. The focused window is indicated by a different title bar color. That's basically what this here is about. Yeah, then you can go back to the previous one with tab. So now we're back to one. Exactly. Yeah, and so master and stacking area, that's what I'm touching about. So basically the concept of DVM, uh, it divides the screen in two parts. With uh, one which has, uh, which should have your primary attention, basically, which is the lot, or typically the largest part. So in this case, it's uh, this left part here, and then the remaining windows are stacked in a, in in the other part of the screen. So this here on the left is the master area. Here's the stacking area. Um, yeah, and then you can we can. So that you know which window is which. So then we can only say, only say. Please. Yes. <laughs> basically, um, DVM calls this tubing, so we can basically switch out um, the the main window. So yeah. What this does is basically swap these two, and then you can increase or decrease. Uh, 
basically the splitting ratio between mass and stacking uh, area. Sorry, 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 sorry. What can you decrease the main window by a lot and then press calculate again? <laughs> yeah, we don't have reflow. Or what do you want to say? Yeah, yeah. But uh, the other way. No, the other way. Yeah, I mean, I... You don't have reflow, but at least can... Yeah, well, fine, fine, fine. I mean, it Just keeps it in memory. Um, but like Tmux, I think, uh, has text reflow. No, no, the fact that you don't have it is actually a good point. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but, yeah, but the but, question yeah. is whether it informs the terminal of the window changes so that the new applications can tell it properly. Yeah, it should, in theory. Yeah. I will come to that. Yeah. So yeah, um, you can increase it and then... Um, yeah, you can also increase the number of windows you want to display. So at the moment it's one, but you can say I want to increase, uh, so now I, I display two windows in, in the master area, uh, but new ones will still go with the hidden stacking area, and then you can decrease it again. So now it's only one window in the master area again. It's basically, yeah, that's all shared with DVM. Uh, then you can minimize, so. Now, we've minimized one window, so they will be typically displayed at the bottom here. And minimize another one, yeah. So if you want to maximize, for example, five, then you can use this uh, focus to the end window, so um, prefix G and then five, and yeah, now it's maximized again, or restored it again. So that's basically that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And you can maximize stuff now, you have only a full screen for, for only one window. Yeah, yeah that's basically a layout. So the full screen was actually a layout which was applied. And the layout is just a way to place or to organize the windows on the available space. And with mod space, we can. Um, cycle through them, so that's the grid. So it tries to divide um, well, the screen space in equal regions. There above, again, is a small symbol which kind of indicates which layout you're currently in. So that's um, <laughs> top tiling. So basically, now you have the master area here above and below are the, the other windows. Screen. And this is the default um, vertical stack tag. Yeah, so you can either cycle through them as I did now, or you can activate one specifically. There are also some other ones like Fibonacci, which kind of, um, well, emulates the Debian logo in some way. <laughs> You're saying source tuple, so it's more than one file? Um, yeah, the, the layouts are <laughs> included, they are C files which are then included into the main file. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, and so you can compile it out in your config.h and then won't load your binary. If you're worried about that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, no, the tying concept, it's again the same as in. Deviant, but I think that's something which is uh, misunderstood uh, a lot, or as we will see, it's kind of a superset of work of the workspace functionality, but it uh, it can be more powerful. And so um, we have a static set of tags, and every window must contain or must be tagged with at least one tag. And then if we go back here, so the tags in, in this by default are just the numbers 1 to 5 here above. But again, you can change them to, I don't know, um, IRC, uh, mail, the lock, whatever. Yeah, and then a view is always a subset of the tag, so you can always select uh, some tags which you want to display. And I think it's best if I illustrate this now. So basically, um, at the moment, all windows which exist are, have only one tag, and that's the one. And now I can basically move to workspace two. 
in the traditional world that is um, display all windows being tagged to and that's none currently so if we now create um, a window that's not a new window to always get the currently active tag so now this window here will be tagged with two yeah and what can we do now yeah now we can basically um, enable more tags. So at, at the moment we're just displaying all windows being tagged 2, now we would like to show also the ones being tagged 1. So we can basically enable that. No, what this does now here, it's maybe a bit hard to read, but it changed uh, the color. Yeah, maybe I should go to another word. Yeah. Basically what it, what it tries to indicate is that at the moment tag 1 and tag 2 are both active now. And that's basically all windows. And, uh, so by now we have just <coughs> modified the, the view, that is the, the, the tags we display, but we can now also do the other way around, we can tag individual windows. So we can say, like uh, our code say, um, this should go to tag 4. Now it moved basically because we set the tag to 4 so it no, it's no longer tagged by 1 and so it disappears from, from our view and now it should also be a bit Yeah, so at the moment the first two are displayed. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we can also toggle tags. But basically what I want to emphasize here is that uh, you can use it as a workspace mechanism, but it is also uh, a bit more powerful but because you can select multiple like workspaces at the same time. And um, yeah, I quite like it. And then the status bar, yeah, we've seen that if you start it by default, it's, uh, it's nothing at all. That's actually because of the scroll back, buff, uh, scroll back buffering or ST, but you can have a status bar. Um, there's a demo script, it's basically, so this one displays the time, but it, what it does is just it reads from a named pipe, so you can basically write whatever you want to it, and what it that the status bar is just an, uh, an example. It basically is a while loop which uh, sleeps for 60 seconds and then uh, pipes uh, the data output to this um, named pipe. Yeah, then we can like uh, hide the status bar or we can toggle its position so now it's at the bottom. Like these are the two options, top or bottom. Um, yeah, I think that's already covered, so when you start EVTM you can say how many lines it should uh, capture, so scroll back history size, and then you can scroll up and down, as you would, as you would probably know it from your um, regular terminal emulator. Then we have keyboard multiplexing. So if you have multiple windows, you can enable um, this mode, and now you can, you can call the same parallel, basically. It's sometimes handy if you have to do the same thing on multiple machines. Um, yeah, interactive things, which are maybe a bit hard to script. Uh, then copy and paste. Uh, yeah, and also, as you notice now, then uh, both title bars will be blue, so all the affected windows basically are blue while in this multiplexing mode. Now we're back again, so now this is, uh, this is yet, uh, this is now the, the copy mode. Basically what it did, it piped the, the scroll back history into your editor and displayed it in the same window. So now um, 
Yeah, you can. It's your regular editor now. You can search for stuff in here. It's like when what does it look? It's like when we're more powerful. <laughs> now, um, now Do you have a nano mode? Hmm? Do you have a nano mode? <laughs> nano mode? Yeah. No, no, I don't it's, like my, it's, it's, you know. it's my own editor. It's called this. <laughs> um, basically, you can now select, uh, we can now select this nice looking car. We can. Um, Right, basically now it will inform us or produce a warning because it will now basically reduce the file to the current selection. And because this is a destructive operation, then you should be sure what you're doing. So we have to specify an exclamation mark. And now we're back in DVTM and it should now have copied the cow into its internal buffer. So if we now um, uh, open, for example, the, the editor again, and then we, oh, yeah, that's actually from then. Yeah, that wasn't so. Okay, that was the. I have overwritten it now. So again, we select what we want to copy. Yeah, now we paste it. Or maybe to show that it's actually... Um, yeah. So basically what we did, we copied it from, from the scroll back history. German? Why is it in German? Yeah, because... Why is it how screwed up? <laughs> yeah. 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 Orientation, orientation. You know, nano is a bit too smart here. Uh. <laughs> okay, now I don't know. Yeah, so what it does, as I said, uh, it types the scrollback history to your preferable editor and then um, keeps what the editor writes to standard output. And to make this work with other editors, it actually creates, there's a, like this utility tool which creates a temporary file. So it receives everything from DVTM via standard input, writes it to a temporary file, executes the editor with this temporary file, and then whatever remains in this file when the editor is closed is then copied by DVTM. Basically. Um, yeah, let us record the, the key bindings by default. Then, yeah, window title um, so basically there's like this uh, terminal escape sequence which, which is supported so you can basically set window titles which are then displayed, displayed up top some application also make use of this can you insert a few end lines there? Hmm? can you insert a few end lines there? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, no, <laughs> no. Uh, it will probably just key, take the last one, but uh, yeah, that's basically just a quick test. <laughs> but yeah, um, the, it just keeps the last line, so the most recently seen best. Um, yeah, then there's some kind of urgent flag, so for example if you have an IRC session you can maybe configure your client to issue um, well, a bell character if you mentioned in something and this will then be seen as, yeah, okay, now I need to create um, just like bell, right? Thank you. 
Yeah, 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 Basically, what should happen is that it should now blink here, tag one, because something happened. Maybe, yeah, I will have to check it later. So then the other is basic mouse support. So what? Uh, now it blinks or it disappeared. What? Yeah, maybe ASCII doesn't actually blink properly. But maybe, yeah, as you can hear it here. Uh, maybe you shouldn't let it blink and use a different background or something. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Less it's annoying to users. Color. Uh, yeah, the the redrawing is a bit messed up. But yeah, now it blinks, right? <laughs> Does it also forward this to the terminal? Or the terminal can do its window management? Um, yeah, uh, uh, you mean to the outer terminal? Uh, yes, so exactly, so to yeah. the outer terminal that then should uh, raise the window yeah. or something like that. So. Yeah, it does, it does. But, the, but there's some like problem because at the moment this reuses anchors. And then, well, if you do mix raw I.O. and then curses, then yeah, maybe bad things will happen. But yeah, in theory it should work. Also here, above in the Debian title bar, you see that foo, so the window title of the, yeah, it should actually be of the focused window, but because here is none, it should probably reset, but yeah. So that's also forwarded, in theory at least. Um, yeah, so mouse. Uh, yeah. So if you double click, it maximizes. Uh, if you single click, it kind of focuses. Um, if we start something like. Yeah, so. Shoot. Pass the mouse event through. The interesting thing is, does uh, selection still work in the terminal most likely? Yeah, no, because uh, yeah, I'm not a heavy mouse user, so well, I, I, I have a patch for that for, uh, for ST, but it's uh, dangerous to turn on. Yeah. Well, no, but mouse selection should work properly. No, but if you, if you turn on mouse reporting in the terminal, uh -huh. the terminal uh -huh. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You you have to press uh, like shift yeah, it's or control, or you can. There's a command line flag yeah, which. Um, yeah. Which disables uh, mouse capturing. Then, if you don't need this crap with the mouse, well, the thing is, I do want some mouse speed. Like the one I'm about to ask for is, uh, what does the scroll do? Does mouse scrolling do something? Same? Yeah, this is very important. Yeah, yes. not sure. We, I mean, we can <laughs> we can look into it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because with this trackpad, um, yeah, not sure. Um, yeah, but for those of you who like the mouse, there's some basic support for it. And yeah, scripting capabilities. Basically, that's actually also something which, uh, which often comes up with my editor. So whose job is it to manage windows? Should the editor manage the windows? Or should your regular window, man uh, man window manager do its, its job also for editing windows? And so it would be nice to have some way to control, basically to create new windows uh, over some kind of scripting capability. And at the moment, that's very rudimentary. Uh, again, over a named pipe, so you can. There are a few hard coded like commands, um, which you can pipe to the to the command. FIFO and then it will do something. Um, yeah, because it's a name path, it's currently unidirectional, meaning you can't do like queries, list your know, windows and stuff. So yeah, basically it's still it's it's very limited and experimental, but something for the future. Future. Yeah, and then Abduka basically now we have covered. Um, well, window management in the console, we have seen it's quite dynamic, it's fun, it's nice. But sometimes the network fails, for example, if we are working on remote hosts. And then, well, we don't want to lose our work. And that's basically what Abduco does. And it's, it's really similar to Detouched, almost. But the basic functionality is the same.
Ah, se, se, se there's a space, so he was doing it on the section was for for it to progress the connection. So he had to insert the space before he done. Nothing, you just picked Yeah, this is actually <laughs> true. <laughs> this is just simply to break the signal. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a useful SSH trait if you're not familiar with it. It's basically in and SSH has kind of an in band protocol, so if you. Yes, we mean. If you know. If you just tell net. Tell me yeah. about this. So that's basically if you're in a SSH session and press enter tilde and and a uh, question mark, then you will see this message and then you see what, what's available and uh, in practice you probably only want to use the first one, which is termination but it's basically when your SSR session is stuck somewhere and yeah, then you don't want to it doesn't react to control C or whatever and you don't want to close the window, so that's how you kill it for good and then the second command here is basically you reconnect uh, you start up Duco and you attach to an existing session. If it doesn't exist, then it creates it. That's what the cap capital A does, basically. So ideally, you should be where you left off. Um, yeah, how does it work? It's a simple client server architecture. It's basically just an echo server. Basically, it reads from the program, it uh, supervises in some sense, and then forwards it over a Unix domain socket, forwards the raw output of the Unix domain socket and it um, doesn't attempt to interpret or preserve terminal state and we will actually see that has its pros and its cons, basically it's really simple um, but it also has some issues so it has no state machine, no knowledge about the current terminal state um, so yeah, we can create sessions, we can detach from a session with this key combination and then we can reattach again and by default it will always start EVTM so here it's just the session name which is given, you can here also give or specify an additional command which you want to start but if you leave it out then it will default to EVTM now if we do that, um, um, so again, now we're in a DVTM session called demo, if we start again, then we'll see it, we can detach from it, and list the session, so we see the demo session was created, we can attach it to it again and do your back to where we left. That happens if you attach it to the session within the session. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, so the session list uh, you've seen basically what's trying to tell you there's a single character which indicates the status. Basically a star indicates that someone is currently connected to it. Um, without the symbol it's still running but uh, currently no client is connected and the uh, plus sign is like the session terminated while you weren't watching it. Then here it uh, displays the, la the, the last activity in some sense of the session when the, the process ID of the server which can be useful as you will see later and the session name basically. So there's no output buffering, so if your session terminates while you're uh, not looking at it, then you won't get back the, the output, but at least it captures the exit state. So what it does here is uh, it starts a new session called demo, but it doesn't connect to it, that's what uh, the minus, minus n option does, and then it starts being false. So and then it immediately tries to reattach to it, or to attach to it, but then um, yeah, session already terminated, and it gets you the exit status, which was one of false here in that case. 
Um, then shared sessions, so sometimes it's useful to have multiple clients connected to the same session for like team programming or code review or whatever. And um, yeah, the problem here there is that um, the pseudo terminal that's provided can only have one size, obviously. And so um, it always uses the size of the most recently connected client. So yeah, should make sure that your host terminal application is large enough to display everything. Um, then we have read-only session, um, but that's not a security feature. Basically, it's just um, to prevent uh, interruptions or so. For example, if you're just idling in some IRC channel and uh, the cat jumps on the keyboard and you don't want to spam the channel, then you can basically attach read-only mode. And what it does, it basically discards all the input. So it just but uh, as I said, it's no security feature, so on the file system someone can still, if it has read access to your socket or corresponding to the session, it can still do uh, whatever you want with it. For that, you can use SOCAT. Basically, the idea is here that to use SOCAT in unidirectional mode, and basically forward the socket. Um, from the private session to, to a read-only location where where people can't write to it. So in that way, the file system permission should um, or directory permission should uh, be effective. If you won't need that. And then resize handling. You ask that basically. Um, yeah, the. We just deliver a signal to the running application, and then it's up to them to basically um, adapt to the new size. Um, then socket recreation, that's a nice uh, trick or tip. Um, case somehow your executable gets lost, or, or, or more likely your session socket gets lost, it gets destroyed by something, someone deletes it. Um, then you can list all Abduco processes which are reparent to paint one because they're demonized, so their parent is, uh, is in it. And then you can list the open files to, to see which process um, has which socket open. And then you can send. Uh, use one signal to the Abduco process and it will recreate the socket on the file system. And if the if the executable is also lost then you can um, or at least on Linux you can copy it out of the proc directory and then you can uh, work regularly again. Uh, I think there is actually an actual socket in proc if you explore yeah, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think it's like slash pit slash fd slash a socket. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but that's right. Yeah, but um, yeah. There's there's a deal. It it won't obviously be listed in the session list because a tuple just looks in some default directory. So if you do it that way, then your session list should still work because it will be once again back to normal. And then yeah, some environment variables so. That's the default command, basically, as we've seen, if it's left out, then we use this, this environment rule, which defaults to dvtm. And then, yeah, we have two more environment variables, which denote the session name and the location of the socket, which can be useful, for example, in dvtm, if you, in the status bar, want to display in which session you are, then you can integrate that in your status bar script and it will display it then. Um, so yeah, basically that's the limitation. So because Atupco operates on the raw I.O. level, it um, does not preserve uh, the terminal state across sessions. And um, this, yeah, this has some artifacts because if you terminal applications typically initialize the terminal in some state, 
for example, for mouse events or whatever, and then if you connect with another kernel which didn't yet have this initialization performed, then yeah, things will be messed up. And so the current plan to fix this is basically that Abduka would send uh, a signal when the session is uh, reattached to DVTM which has, which knows um, in which state the terminal should be and then it basically would reinitialize the terminal to the way it expects it and then everything should work at least in theory. Yeah, so to close out, yeah, it's really been neglected in the past couple of years. There's some bugs which for example, macOS users, uh, it's currently broken for them apparently because their operating system doesn't really support pselect portably. Um, yeah, the, the, the terminal state across session I just mentioned and then, yeah, I'm thinking about uh, ripping out the terminal emulation. Because as you saw, the, the initial announcement was like 10 years ago and it used uh, some other library at the time and it was never really written to the specification. So there are rarely some glitches and it just doesn't really make sense to maintain yet another terminal emulation library. So there are multiple options here. Either we could kind of uh, use the terminal emulation part of ST so the suckless or simple terminal or we could use the problem there is that it's not really in a library ready consumable way there's also port to Wayland which is also not really nicely integrated yeah so that's one option and then late meter that's what NeoVim and uh, I think also Vim recently basically um, bundles now nowadays so that's uh, I briefly looked at it, uh, it has a rather nice API because it doesn't expect any memory allocation. It's also suitable for kernel mode usage, which some people apparently did. And so at libticket, it's basically a modern cursus replacement which uh, has no global state. Uh, yeah, which should be a bit nicer to use, hopefully. Yeah, the scripting capabilities and the last point is some bureaucracy regarding to the license. Um, so, to the conclusion, we try to use multiple tools and combine them in a sensible way. It has some raw edges, but uh, I think conceptually it would be a much nicer architecture. Um, it's non-bloated, so DVTM is about 4,000 lines of code. Aptuka is like 1,000 lines or something. So it's uh, rather small, it's uh, in some way also bare bones, limited, but at least for my use case it works as it should. Um, and with that we come to the end. The repo, so we have also non-github mirrors for those who like those. You can send patches by email if you prefer. Um, and yeah, if you want to discuss about it on IRC, then it's probably best to join the FIS editor channel, which is somehow related, and there are about 20 people or so in there. So maybe somebody will respond if you're lucky. And yeah, that's probably all. Uh, why the name of Duke? Um, uh, it's Latin. Yes, continue. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was suggested by a friend. No, it's Latin for um, reattachment or something. I will look at that thing. <laughs> Basically, I'm terrible at naming stuff. Do what was his first person present? No? Ah, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, for me too. <laughs> Duke, that means uh, to guide away. And Abduka is first person singular present. If I remember correctly. 
So I'm taking away. It basically means I'm taking away. <laughs> or guiding away. Or basically. Well, so it's related to ink before contact. Yeah. Yes. That too. Probably. But I'm, I'm never sure with Latin because uh, sometimes English words, even though they sound the same, they're not exactly the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. Hope it wasn't a waste of your time. Um, 